External respiration takes place in the lungs. It is the process in which exchange of gases takes place between the alveolus and the pulmonary capillary. Air that's inhaled arrives at the alveolus, crosses the alveolar wall, crosses the capillary wall, and ends up in the pulmonary capillary. This way, oxygen diffuses from the alveolus to the capillary. Carbon dioxide diffuses from the capillary to the alveolus. There are five factors that affect simple diffusion, and they also affect external respiration. Membrane thickness, when it increases, decreases the speed of diffusion. Membrane surface area, when that increases, it also increases the speed of diffusion. The third factor is pressure gradient. When the pressure gradient is high, the speed of diffusion increases. The partial pressure of a gas increases the speed of diffusion. The greater the partial pressure of a gas, the greater the speed of diffusion. The solubility of the gas in water is also important. So the greater the solubility of the gas in water, the faster the speed of diffusion. These last two factors, partial pressure and solubility, come under Henry's law, which we will talk about a little bit later. Membrane thickness is the one factor that when it increases, it actually decreases the speed of diffusion. Uh, it, this makes sense because when you uh, have a thick membrane, this would present a greater barrier for substances to diffuse. So the greater the membrane thickness, the slower the speed of diffusion. This becomes important in pneumonia. When a person has pneumonia, the amount of fluid that accumulates in the alveolus is so high that it actually makes the alveolar wall much thicker than normal. As a result, the diffusion of oxygen and carbon dioxide is extremely slow. So that's the alveolar wall, and here is the mucus that accumulates on the inside of the alveolar wall. This lowers the speed of diffusion, and the speed of diffusion is so slow that it can no longer support life. So that's why people with pneumonia die. In the lungs, the membrane surface area really comes from the alveolar walls. If the alveolar walls are intact, then the membrane surface area is high and the speed of diffusion is also high. So the greater the membrane surface area, the faster the speed of diffusion. This is for the normal lungs. In patients with emphysema, this becomes a problem because the alveolar walls are destroyed by cigarette smoke. So the membrane surface area is decreased greatly in emphysema patients. And so the speed of diffusion also goes down drastically. As a result, oxygen cannot diffuse fast enough into the tissues and there is chronic hypoxemia. So let's take a look at the alveolus that's normal. There's, and this is the alveolar sac being damaged. The walls are damaged. In emphysema, there are no walls in between. And this greatly reduces the speed of diffusion. When the pressure gradient increases, the speed of diffusion also increases. So greater the pressure gradient, the faster the speed of diffusion. So let's take a look at this graph here. The one with the highest gradient is the steepest gradient that you see here. And that is air coming from in a hyperbaric chamber at three atmospheres. It's three times the atmospheric pressure. So this obviously increases the speed of diffusion. The opposite is the reduced gradient. So imagine that you are at a very high altitude in Quito, Ecuador, or in Colorado on a very high ski slope. 
The air is at three thousand meters. It's a very low uh, pressure, so this causes the oxygen to diffuse much more slowly, which is why people get mountain sickness when they are at a very high altitude. We live in New York City, and here is the sea level. It's one atmosphere, and this has a normal diffusion of oxygen. So. The greater the gradient, the faster the diffusion. The lower the gradient, the slower the diffusion. So let's write that down. According to Henry's law, the diffusion of a gas depends upon its partial pressure and the solubility of gas in water. So. The greater the partial pressure of a gas, the faster the speed of diffusion. Now, when we think about inspired air, nitrogen has the greatest partial pressure. The amount of nitrogen in atmospheric air is seventy-eight percent. Oxygen is only twenty-one percent. By this account, nitrogen should be the one that crosses the alveolar wall, crosses the capillary wall. And ends up in our bloodstream and in all of our tissues. However, that is not the case because nitrogen is not soluble in water under normal conditions. It is oxygen that satisfies both rules. Oxygen has a fairly decent partial pressure, about twenty-one percent, and it is also soluble in water. And so, it is oxygen that ends up. In our tissues. So let's make this clear. Under Henry's law, we now know that in normal conditions, it is oxygen that ends up in our tissues. So oxygen diffuses across the capillary and alveolar walls, and they end up in all of our tissues. Nitrogen, on the other hand, does not. Diffuse across the alveolar and capillary walls because they are not soluble. It is not soluble in water, and so it ends up being exhaled along with carbon dioxide. All these changes in deep sea diving, at the ocean depth, the pressure is very high. It's four times the atmospheric pressure, and so the partial pressure of nitrogen is extremely high. High enough that it overrides the solubility factor, and nitrogen is forced into the pulmonary capillaries. So here we have a deep sea diver who is enjoying some kind of fantasy with a mermaid. So what's going on here? The nitrogen in the brain produces a narcotic effect. The narcotic effect is often referred to as raptures of the deep. When the scuba diver is closer to the surface of the water, the nitrogen does not enter the tissues. However, as he moves down deeper into the ocean, the、uh, atmospheric pressure is twice the level of atmospheric pressure at sea level. So, nitrogen is forced into his blood. And also reaches all of his tissues. If he swims up slowly back to the surface, then there is enough time for the nitrogen to leave his tissues as he is breathing out. However, if he swims up too quickly, then what will happen is that the nitrogen is still stuck in his tissues. It's stuck in his brain. It's Stuck in his joints, so as he comes up, it produces a very painful condition known as the bends. Another term for the bends is decompression sickness. It is characterized by skin rash, vertigo, poor balance, confusion, nausea, fatigue, abdominal pain, and joint pain. The person with decompression sickness cannot board a plane right after because the pressure decreases as you go up on the plane. And nitrogen will then continue to leave the tissues and cause the person considerable amount of discomfort and great pain.